Hi everybody, it's Lisa Tarmati here from Running Hot Coaching and today on the show uh, I'm going to be doing a solo cast, so got no guest in the studio with me today, it's just me and I'm going to be talking to you and giving you some advice around getting over a bad run. So, as usual, please, uh, if you like this podcast, we'd love you to subscribe, uh, like, share, r- uh, rate and review. Uh, we'd really, really appreciate that. That's the only way we can get the word out there of what we're doing. Um, and we'd love you to do that for us. We really appreciate that. So, today, it's about getting over a bad run. So, for all uh, those people out there who are runners... Um, and it's especially aimed at people that are perhaps beginners or haven't been doing it for so long and are really, really struggling with motivation because they're having a few bad runs. Now, the first thing to note here is that bad run days are like bad hair days. They just happen. You don't know why, and sometimes you've just got to accept the fact that we aren't robots, okay? We have daily stresses, we've got hormones, we've got maybe an infection coming, maybe lack of sleep, maybe it's exhaustion, maybe a little bit hot, dehydrated, or you haven't eaten enough today, all these things can have an effect on your performance when you're training. So understanding that we are very complex organisms and we have so many things that can affect how we feel. It isn't just about the fact that you're now unfit because today's run, you know, you couldn't get up that hill that you got up last week and you're feeling like a sluggish snail. You know, there are so many facets to it. So don't uh, feel disheartened by that. Um, And even if your um, training calendar says to you that today you've meant to be doing, I don't know, a big long run or a a really intense interval training session, if you aren't feeling up to it, and this is where a bit of experience comes into it, learning to read your own body, if you aren't feeling up to it, if there's things that are going on in your life, then it may be a, a good time to just reprogram, maybe swap that training day out for an easier one. And uh, it's not about being lazy and it's not about being not motivated. It's about listening to your body when you need to because there are real advantages as being able to understand yourself and to give yourself that leeway to pull back when you need to and to push harder in other times. Um But now I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the real benefits of a bad run. And now that sounds a bit counterintuitive. You know, you're having a bad run day. um, What's good about that? Well, actually, there's quite a lot of good things that can happen out of a bad run. It makes you mentally tougher when you have to push through and get through a really tough training run. And let's face it, that is the most important attribute as a runner is mental toughness and resilience and being able to fight through. So it teaches you to keep going when the going is tough. And when you push through and you get that, you know, you, you, you don't give up and you, you keep on going, that teaches you so much about mental toughness. So when I have a day that's really been a, a bad day at the office and I come in and I'm thinking, well, that wasn't very uh, uplifting, um, I think, well, I've had a lesson in mental toughness. I've, I've strengthened myself psychologically for dealing with pain, for dealing with um, feeling unfit and sluggish because we don't always feel like we're the same boat running down that 100-meter track, okay? That isn't what it's all about. Some days we just don't. And learning to deal with pain and sluggishness and feeling like that is exactly what you're going to have to do in a big race. So if you're doing a a long distance race, whether it's a, I don't know, whatever it is for you, maybe a 5K, maybe a 10K, maybe a 100K ultra marathon, whatever that is for you, by learning to deal with that pain, that sluggishness and that having a bad day, that's exactly what you're going to be facing halfway in or three quarters of the way into your race. And if you've learned to deal with that, then that can make you mentally stronger for that race and help you get through that time. So it's honing your mental strength. And that's the most valuable training lesson of all. Now, another thing is that learn to appreciate that when you have a good run. Now, bad run days make you appreciate the ones where it was great and it was all flowing and it felt like you could run forever and it, you felt like it was effortless uh, and it felt like you were you were just flying. So when you have a bad run day, 
use those times to appreciate that when you have a good day and you know how good feels uh and 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 yeah adapt and uh, adopt an attitude of appreciating things of gratitude uh for when things are going well and then those wonderful times when you find that flow and where everything comes together and that enjoyment that you get um when you're having a good run day it will come back again uh, another thing is like f- beginners especially will be put off by having a bad run day. Um, they can be totally, it can throw them completely off course. Especially um, maybe in the first few weeks of your new running program and you started off with a hiss and a roar and the first maybe week or two is going really well. You're probably doing too much, most beginners do. And then you're thinking you're going to improve day by day and week by week. And then you have a bad run day and you think, oh, it's all for nothing. It's all a waste of time. I'm all back where I was at the beginning and what was the point of all doing all that? Um, can I just reassure you, man, it's, it's, just <laughs> it's just one of those things that you're never going to have a, a line of performance that goes straight up. You're always going to be having little dips, little hiccups, and that's just part of the road of a runner. Um, so understanding that and not giving up, especially for those beginners out there when you're having a bit of a tough time, maybe reassess. Beginners often go out too hard, too fast, and then they're going really well for a couple of weeks and then bang and crash. So maybe you've overtrained, maybe you need to step it back a little bit. Um, and don't think that you've lost your fitness because you had a bad run. Your fitness doesn't just go up and down like that. Um, something's just not on target today and just see it for what it is and don't over dramatize it and get out back out there really really soon so don't let that run that bad run day put you off for too many days okay Um, do an overtraining checklist Uh, by this I mean do things like check your morning resting pulse before you get out of bed before you do anything You should do this on a regular basis. Take your resting pulse and learn, establish what your baseline is. And if you're feeling like you're overtrained, that things aren't going well, take that pulse again. See if it's higher than usual. If it's more than 10 beats higher than than it normally would be, that's a real strong sign that something isn't right. Maybe you're overtraining. Maybe you've got an infection. Maybe you've been stressed out or you haven't slept enough. Uh, and it's time to, to pull back a little to recuperate because this is a really, you know, as, as, a, as a coach and as an athlete, I see athletes trying to walk this tightrope of training enough but not training too much, of, of pushing themselves mentally, being tough, being hardcore, but then going too far and not reaping the benefits because it's only in the recuperation and the recovery phase when you actually start to see the benefits to keep that in mind and if your resting pulse is up that's a sure sign that you're going too hard out and you might want to take a day off or two days off maybe do some cross training get in the pool maybe do some yoga something that's got not going to stress out your adrenals and that will help you recover Now, another thing is with bad run days, try and forget them as quickly as possible. Even if this was a race and you had a bad race, uh, and we've all had hundreds, you know, I've had hundreds of bad races. You know, some days it all comes together and others it doesn't. Forget them as quickly as possible. Move on and mentally tick it off. and Get on with the job of the next run or the next training session or your next goal. We all have failures, we all have setbacks, and this is just something that you have to get over and get through. Perhaps start to change something if you can see for you know that there's something wrong, um, or if you're overtrained, take a day or two off, change things up, maybe go for a swim or a cycle instead of a run, maybe do an aerobics class or a Pilates class, but challenge your body in a different way, give it a break from the running and see if it comes right. Um, I mean, I just came back um, recently from a really high end and ten interval session, you know, with the the you know warm up and the high intensity part, and they came back, and I was totally and utterly it was horrid. I didn't do well, and every minute of the speed work was was just crap. And you know, that's okay. I know what that is, and I don't let that infect me. You know, then I have another session a couple of weeks ago where I was just flying. You know, and these sort of experiences are just part of the course of being human and being a runner. 
Okay, so don't give up on anything. Keep your motivation high. Pull back when you need to and just see it for what it is. It's just like you have bad hair days, you will have bad run days. So thanks very much for listening to the podcast today. A short one, but hopefully one that will uh, help you perform better. And we will see you again shortly on the podcast. Don't forget to rate and review us and share it with your friends. Thanks, guys.